Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We have the goal of launching a new space station and sending three Kerbals up to visit it, but our space plane can only carry two. So we need to make a new space plane. We need to make a new space plane that can carry more than two people. Uh, because otherwise we will not have space for at least three, well, they'll have space for at least three crew on the station, but we have to bring three crew to it. And we won't be able to do that un unless they ex accept. Oops, unless they accept that we can send it up on, in two batches. I'm not sure that the contract will understand that, so we're not gonna chance it. Anyway, our existing space plane seems to work just fine now, <laughs> perfectly fine, no problems at all. So we should make a new one. So what I've come up with is called the Neko. This is the Neko space plane. It is about 30 tons compared to about 20 tons for the Maya space plane and it can carry six people potentially though we probably don't want to stuff it full of them because otherwise they will be cramped it will not be ideal uh, the living space is ideal for two but if we have uh, three it should be all right six well I mean it'll still be okay duration for even a trip to the moon so it's not that big a deal but still and we don't want to pack them in too much. Obviously, this is just the Mark II parts. I haven't made my own custom stuff for that. The Mark II parts mostly look all right, except it's hard to get good RCS on them. I've used these. These are the modular RCS ports, and they're the BDB, S4B, APS things. It says four-way, but I have no idea where the fourth-way is, because um, the bottom seems closed up, the top seems closed up, and then so one, two, three only. So I have no idea where the fourth way is. But anyway, we've got them in the front and back, but that might not be enough. We'll see. And we've got some extra thrusters in the back. So why am I not using the Mark III cockpit, you might ask? Uh, we could have a full-fledged space plane uh, or a space shuttle, right? I mean, it'd be pretty legit. That has a crew capacity of four. Well, first of all, we can see that the unlock cost here is 459000 for all of this. And we've got enough unlock credit for that. If we take a look at the Mark III cockpit and sort of slap it on here, it's huge, first of all. And second of all, four million suddenly. So the Mark III cockpit alone, the unlock cost is 3.6 million. And there's no contract thing paying us for that. So we're not going to do it. <laughs> so, and we haven't even unlocked it yet. So yeah, that is, that is not happening. And besides that, even though, you know, it's physically huge, that's all vertical. As far as its sort of surface area down here is concerned, its surface area that would be hitting the atmosphere is not that much different from the Mark II parts. But it's heavier on that same surface area, which means it will get more heat. Uh, it, it is more of a blunt object. 9.16 tons, and the Mark II cockpit is a mere 1.5. Don't ask me why, I didn't size it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the same heat tolerance and everything, but if you put this uh, that much mass on the same surface area, it's not gonna go well. So I'm not doing it. And we have the Mark II cabin to increase our capacity for crew. And then we have a hydrogen oxygen tank with MLI layers. And then we have MHN Mon 3, for the little thrusters. We've got more of the MH and Mon 3 for in the front, uh, just to balance things out. And then we have the 3.6 kN thrusters and the same RZ20s. It's just the two. And then we have a potential mounting point here for the rocket. But we're probably not gonna do it that way because we've had a bunch of problems putting the rocket underneath the space plane. So this one's gonna be positioned like a normal shuttle on the side of the rocket. And we'll see how that works out. I'm sure that's going to be fun. Uh, we have fuel cells instead of the solar panels. Of course, we've got hydrogen and oxygen anyway, so why not? And they are positioned currently at the center of mass when it's empty. This is the center of mass when it's got the fuel. And so it doesn't shift around that much. If we empty it, you can see it moving like that. And you know, the empty liquid hydrogen and oxygen tanks, if we fill those up, it's not going to be automatically abort capable. And also it would go beyond the capacity of our controller, which is back here. This one's a 30 ton controller. 
If we fill that up, it is not beyond the capacity of the controller in the Mark II cockpit, but that is only relevant if we have crew on board. The Mark II cockpit can control 100 tons, believe it or not. See, controllable 100 tons. We have the center mass just like that. It doesn't move around that much, which is exactly what we want, but we do have spare hydrogen oxygen capacity in the tail and potentially also in the wing, but we don't have that configured. We may or may not use that capacity, but having the tank there means that the tail is heavier, which is the equivalent of putting lead weight in, and I'm doing that mainly because I wanted the center mass not to move around too much. Now, we're going to flight test this first with the controller because we did that last time with the other one and it proved necessary and useful for the aborts. So we're going to make sure that it can actually fly first, um, such as it is, and then we'll work on the rest. And I should probably make this, uh, I haven't tooled this controller yet, and I should probably make it a better service module, maybe. That might cost more, but then we've got the unlock red, so it doesn't matter. We do seem to consume a little bit more than we're producing as far as the fuel cells are concerned. That's all right for now, maybe? We'll see. I mean, we expect to dock in an undock. We're not hanging out in low Earth orbit for a long period of time. We'll adjust as necessary. Um, one other thing is that the body flap here isn't a body flap. I mean, it's not a body flap in that it's going to be controllable. These are actually wing pieces. They don't move. They're just there to protect the engines, which they probably will do badly. We need to make sure that since we're going to flight test it uncrewed, that has enough to communicate with those satellites in orbit, assuming they're still all right. This time we have the Apollo docking port there. I decided to put it there just so it doesn't obstruct the hatch and it's easy to get to instead of putting it where the center mass is. Um, because the further into the tank it is, the more awkward it might seem for the Kerbals to actually get to it. We are actually going to dock and pretend that they can transfer into the station and all that business. Anyway, that's all for later. Right now we have to update the propellant GSC for the, uh, the space plane hangar, I guess, or the runway, however you want to look at it. And that's even if we reduce the fuel. Actually, I don't think this has more fuel than the than our other space plane, actually. It has less delta V overall. So I don't know why we have to update the propellant GSC at all, but okay, fine. Uh, okay. So, renovate, it's not that much, maybe just a little tiny bit more. So, if all goes well with the flight testing, which it might not, but uh, we'll just plan on it based on what we've got so far, because I've tried my best to make it look a lot like the Mark I space plane, the Maya space plane as well, and so we're not changing that much. Why does it seem like, I think I have two vertical stabilizers there, is that what's happening there? Gosh darn it. Well, I'm sure that messed things up. Okay, so as I was saying, so this is how we're going to launch the Neko, assuming everything goes well with the flight testing. Uh, it is going to be launched on the side here with the Vulcane in the center and our boosters with the Viking 5s, I think they are. Um, Viking 5Bs. And this is the Arcturus Light. And one thing we've done here is that the liquid oxygen is on top, as it was on the shuttle stack, and then after that the rest of the tanks have liquid hydrogen. In order to make sure we have the right ratio, that top tank has limited utilization. These, as with the Arcturus itself, are balloon tanks. They are already tooled, uh, but the top tank is not a balloon tank. It's an uh, aluminum gridded tank. So that's just because it was also tooled. And also with the balloon tanks you can't do 49% utilization, so uh, I didn't want to use a balloon tank for that one. Now, in order to make this balanced, we've offset the Vulcane a bit. It's closer to the shuttle side and slightly slightly tilted right now. We'll change the tilt depending on how it goes. We can also light the engines on the space plane early potentially but uh, if it seems necessary, but we'd rather not do that. Uh, they've got a maximum burn time of um, 7 minutes and 50 seconds. Right now we're using 5 minutes and 40 seconds of it, let's say. But if we light it close to when that tank you know, starts running out, it'll be alright. Uh, we do have Cybertrons on the main tank, 
so that will help separating it off, and otherwise we have plenty of Delta V for low Earth orbit, and of course deorbiting. And then even after the Hydrolox is all done, we will still have enough to deorbit with the hypergolic system. So that is the idea, but can it fly? Well, we will have to check that out. Also, this wing is larger than our wing for the Maya spacecraft and the fins at the bottom of the rocket. So we once again need to update the launch pad in order to make sure it fits this. And so let's see, upgrade. Um, I don't need too many things. 460 is fine. Height limit is the same. Looks like just changing that length. We might as well change both the length and the width if we're going to do that. Um, 8,800 for whatever reason. The propellant GSC is not a problem. But yeah, well, 8,800 is minor. So we'll renovate it ahead of time. Okay, so we've got two construction projects underway. Okay, fine, we're committing to this. I gotta spend the unlock credit that we got for potentially unlocking the nuclear engines, I guess, on the Mark II cockpit. It says RP0 no cost. They need to figure those out. They can't give us the Mark II cockpit. The Mark II cockpit doesn't say no cost. They can't give us the Mark II cockpit and the cabin and not have these priced right. Thomas is the only one free? I mean, we don't need somebody immediately, but getting them proficient... Well, let, let's take them off of uh, what they're doing right now. The Maya space plane they don't need to continue doing. Oh, their, the Mark II cockpit training is instant. They haven't fixed that yet, I guess. Maybe there's been an update. It should be instant, darn it. It's practically like the Maya spacecraft. It, we'll pretend it's like an Airbus thing. It's it's ESA after all. Uh, so like the Airbuses, all the Airbuses have the same cockpit. It's fine. If they're trained in the Maya space plane, they should have instant proficiency in the Mark II cockpit. It's the Airbus way. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Oh, uh, those attitude jets. Oh, the girder adapter there. For if we actually wanted to attach it, attach the rocket to the tail. And we had a radial attachment point. We never used the radial attachment point before. But anyway, that's mounting the controller there. I'll keep the GER segment, why not? How much does the GER segment weigh? It's probably helping with the balance anyway. 0 0.02, nothing. <laughs> not a, uh, we could take it off and it probably won't make any difference. Maybe you'll have some heat dissipation properties, or maybe you'll uh, cause more heating problems. I don't know. Can't tell yet. We've got money. I'm going to do a somewhat radical thing. I'm going to build the one with the launcher as well. So, the VAB version. And that'll be more to test how the launcher works than the space plane. Um, it occurs to me belatedly that our runway is somewhat underground, isn't it? Um, let me try and fix that. <laughs> we need, uh, we need to lift up our space, uh, uh, lower our terrain and lift up our space center. Hold on. We need to fix this. Uh, I think I made it too low. Well, uh, hmm. It's fine for now. It's 10 meters different. This has got to be too touchy. I'm not going to mess with it right now. We'll just keep it where it is. This might be interesting. We're currently fully fueled with hydrogen and oxygen. So I don't know if I can get off the ground. No air brakes, no drag chute. Fully fueled with hydrogen and oxygen. Except for the lock tank in the back. Alright, here we go. These things also don't have that much thrust at sea level. It's amazing they have any thrust at sea level. No. Oh, we lost a body flap there.
Boop. I don't know how valid that is with the body flap missing. But. Okay, but we got off the ground the first time. That's better than with the Maya spacecraft. <laughs> it's not going very fast though, but that's because these things are getting... Oops. These things are getting only 33 kilonewtons out of their normal, and they're getting half their specific impulse as well. It's about half their thrust and half their specific impulse. It's actually a pretty good takeoff speed considering it's full, filled with fuel. Okay, we really don't need to break the speed of sound, but I also don't want to turn them off. <laughs> hmm, this is tough. Okay, well, it's wiggling a lot because of the transonic thing. I've got to try and... Glide with it. Well, I, I want the air brakes. <laughs> Not a big surprise. We'll do the customary turns to slow ourselves down. Well, we have no choice now, but... We're still going very fast without any air brakes or drag chutes, so... It's not gonna go well. No. Oh, okay. Well, jocks. Um, we can't go around. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just set it down off to the side somewhere instead of the runway. Oh, except we were very nose heavy. Uh. uh uh, come on, come on. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't. Oh, it seems like it's nose heavy after it depletes all the fuel. Almost an exit flight test, but not quite. Maybe after we put the drag chute in, uh, I guess there's still some bits. <laughs> oh, forget it. Back to space plane hangar. Um, drag shoot and the brakes, maybe it'll be better. Very close on takeoff. After, well, we, we basically had about something like that much. It's not that far in front, but apparently that's too far in front for it. Oh, so we had lost these. But then, I don't know, maybe we, maybe it's the opposite problem? I don't know. Didn't seem like we had the op it seemed like we had trouble pulling up. That's all nice. <laughs> I don't know. One hundred seems fine. Last time we pumped it up to twenty on that, and we were using two. So how long that'll be March first? This one's January 11th. So, let's see how the launch goes. Okay. So, well, we don't have anything else to do except the throttle up. SAS is on. And let's see how the balance goes with this. Ignition. And launch. Well. Going through max Q, not too bad. Went a bit steep though. Okay, booster set. We do have potential G-force mitigation with the boosters. We can switch off two of the engines on each. Why are, why are you pointing over there? That's not even roll. Why is this... Is the gimbling on this like not working? Maybe it's the weird balance of it. Fine. Why don't you roll to zero? I understand the pitch part. I understand the roll not being great, but why sideways? Hmm. Maybe we should have some extra ones of these as verniers. Or maybe this is the time to just ignite the bloody things. But it's a little bit early. Oh, that's a little bit too much gimbal there. Definitely need to remove that center girder. But yeah, I think we just need these guys as verniers for this thing. 
cross feed. I guess I can just enable cross feed like that. No need for fuel lines anymore. They used to be so important. Still, anything overheating on launch is just like a bad sign. Now this doesn't have the air brakes or the drag chutes or anything like that. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, it can't... Okay. Uh... <laughs> okay, so the volcano gets imbalanced there, even if we have these on. Might as well use the hypercolics in parallel for efficiency's sake. We'll need to reserve some of the hydrolocks. I think we're gonna have to accept a uh, somewhat harsh re-entry. And who knows where. I think that's all I can accept. Nega 64 kilometers is not too far from our normal one, uh, normal negative 40. We gotta pump the fuel to the back here because it felt like we might be a little bit too far forward on the center of mass, but we'll see. Anyway, we're coming down. Right now, it's not as heavy uh, at this point as I thought it would be. 15.87, I thought it'd be more like 19 tons, but that was probably with all the hypergolic fuel. We also have all the food, water, and oxygen. That's enough for a full cabin for 14 days, so we really don't need to carry all that. Unless we're actually using this for, like, the moon. Uh, here we go. Overheating already at 92 kilometers. Of both the Mark II cockpit and the crew cabin. We're using a bunch of pitch, too. Please cool off when we go up. Please cool off when we go up. Please cool off when we go up. I guess... On the bright side, the engine isn't overheating. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh, those are the RCS thrusters. Well, we lost the RCS thrusters, but the cabin is still overheating, but we're going up. But then with the Maya space plane, we didn't really cool down when we went up with the crew cabin. So we'll see. I don't know. Um, the RCS thrusters we lost were the, like the default ones. Apparently these ones have much higher heat tolerance than those did. I don't know why. These modular ones, why can't they all have the same heat tolerance? Well, that's interesting. The Mark II cockpit heat indicator has gone away. So unlike the Maya spacecraft, which is based on the Mark I fuselage, it seems to actually cool off every now and again. And we're running out of the RCS. So, we gotta try and use less pitch by pitching down. I will also dump the water. Which will make it less nose heavy. Dumping the food seems unlikely to be realistic. Mm. Let's try and dump the oxygen. Uh oh, now the engine's overheating? Hopefully that'll be alright. Come on, crew cabin. Weakest link right here. Uh, we're going back down and it's not cooled down. Maybe if I pitch down a bit? I don't know if it'd be better or worse. But maybe it would take less heat like that? Technically, it has the same heat tolerance as the Mark II cockpit. Mark II should be experiencing more heat because it's in front, but I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, it, go it went. It went. Uh, maybe we should put little parachutes on the cabin. Well, we don't have comms with it. Not that I could do anything anyway. Uh, what is up with the cabin, with the little crew cabin? Oh, 
Well, still it did better than the Maya space plane on the first few tries. But clearly more work needs to be done both in terms of the flight performance and the re-entry performance and the launch performance. All sorts of things need to be fixed. So the problems that we had on the front end of the Maya spacecraft we have with that crew cabin apparently. Now this was a harsher than normal re-entry, negative 64 kilometers rather than negative 40. Alright, well I will contemplate these scientific results and uh, we will uh, adjust our experiments in the future. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.